guiding us, being the light, teaching us, correcting us, rebuking us, loving us. Thank you, Father, for that which you do. So again, we present ourselves and we, our hearts. We pray that you'll have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. So I think I have some time. I'm going to read some of these verses. I was not going to, but let me just do that. Um, what would Jesus say today? Part two. We talked about uh, our... The, from the book of Revelations last week, talked from about two churches, and then now it's going to be today, we'll do three churches. Um, and so I'll just read some of this and then deal with a couple of verses from here. Um, and of course, as you know, in, in my introduction last week, I said that these churches were churches that existed. There's nothing symbolic about them, they're real churches that God wanted to address. He wanted to talk to them, deal with them. And so he had some words to say to each one of those churches. The point for us is um, this can also apply to the modern church. That we that are listening and living today, uh, are, are, we, must, uh, we must appreciate that, that Jesus is the Lord of the church and that he will speak to his church. And so it's possible that he could say some of these things uh, or something close to that. He would definitely want to address his church. I'm not the head of the church. He is. I'm just a messenger standing in his place here on earth. And so we, we all of us, have a role to play and I'm very accountable definitely as I was share with you this morning a little bit I am very accountable to the Lord for everything that goes on here whether good bad ugly I have to account to the Lord so I think that he would want to visit us during during our lifetime uh, while we do this will we do church even before before he meets us in the end, before we go there, he will talk with us and confront us and deal with us because we're his bride, we're his people. So I'm expecting it. So that's the context of these churches that Jesus had addressed. We should get alarmed and be afraid and fearful. There's nothing to be fearful about because look, if, if somebody is guiding you, leading you, correcting you, then they do it out of love. If they don't want you helped and, you know, aligned and you go straight into a, a dark world, then he would leave you to do it. But not the Lord. He loves us too much to let us go. So he brings warnings. So let's look at it. I'll just read all of this um, from these three churches and then we'll talk a bit in Revelations 2, we're dealing with uh, the church in Smyrna, verse number 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which are about you're about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will, you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. And then some words to the church in Theatira uh, in verse number 18 of the same chapter, Revelations 2. And to the angel, and every time the angel is mentioned, it's not an angel in the heavens, it's an angel, a messenger, a pastor, a leader. God is addressing the church and the church pastors, 
leaders are very accountable to God. And to the angel of the church in Theatira write, These things, says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass, I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols, and I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest of Theatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. And he was an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then some words to the church in Sardis, finally, for this morning, Revelation 3, verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, and that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remained that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect unto God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. And you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 40 verses, eh? You don't have to read your Bible now. You, know, you sleep for the rest of the year. But it's quite scary when you, when you hear it, huh? That's why the scriptures need to be read aloud in the church. And when you're at home, you can also read aloud. Something happens when you read and you hear. Um, but it's quite, as I said, so we'll allude to some things. Uh, we'll deal with the three churches, as I said, and we'll address some of his concerns. Um, he does know these churches very well. He knows them. I know you, he says, I know you. There's no way you can hide. You know, he knows your address. He knows your mail. He's read your mail. In fact, he knows your future. That's how good and, and uh, good God is. So he visits these churches with words at this time and he warns them, hey, listen, I see this, I hear this, I know this, but watch this, watch that. There are a few things I wanted to take out of here this morning and I will deal with in a minute, but let me, let me, let me read those verses that where, where, it's, where he addresses his concerns or his, uh, how he sees it. In, in Revelation 2 verse 9, I know your works, I know your tribulation, if I can add those words, and I know your poverty, 
but you are rich even though they they were rich because the smyrna is a is a is a industrial revolution kind of a city wonderful things were happening there so they were quite rich but he says you're poor i know your works i know your tribulation and sometimes sometimes money can make you poor that's a revelation I was right that down that's important it was free you can have money but you're still poor basically spiritually poor spiritually dead and jesus you know it's it's good that we talk to each other like this it's good because you don't want to hear this from the lord and it's better even before you hear anybody say these things where you deal with yourself even before the lord addresses it if you just listen to the word of the lord you read his word and he and he says to that church i know your works i know your tribulation i know your address you're rich but really you're poor if if we if we read that then i think we should take the admission for ourselves we take the warning for ourselves we will do well then we go before god and we repent to say you know what this this is right you know me i am faking it you know or something we could say something to him it's and then he says i know the blasphemy of those who say they are jews and are not but are of the synagogue of satan so this is a capital city of the jewish uh, well you know it was like satanic action there there are people that say they are jews but they're not they belong to satan they are the synagogue of satan hectic eh and i shudder to think that that this could be the church today this is the church he's writing to and and he is is wanting this church accountable for that that which is happening in that city because he began it he he put that light there the church is a light there and we certainly can't be playing games oh how the church plays its games how they 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 thrive on programs and as long as you keep people happy with the programs you have this that and the other with this cool ask jesus if he's cool with this or what he sees how he sees us here in chatsworth in durban how does he see us how does he see the church generally speaking what's going on i shudder when i think of it and so the church in theatira he says i know your works i know your love i know your service i know your faith you know you don't have to impress anybody by saying what you do he has the one who knows he knows he knows what you do he knows what you don't do he got it all i know your works i know your love i know your service i know your faith i know your patience i'm adding those words as you might see and as for your works the last are more than the first in other words you are doing better than you used to is is commenting them whatever you're doing now you've increased in in the work that you're doing than you were in the beginning you really are doing yourself wonderful and this is a wonderful commendation if the lord can say to you as individuals and to us as a church you're doing well you're doing well in these areas but but here you need some help hm you can't be all bad right so he says nevertheless nevertheless i have a few things against you because you allowed that woman jezebel who called herself a prophetess to teach now this is not a sexual thing this is somebody in the church possibly a woman uh in that place jezebel um who called herself a prophetess she is teaching and by her teaching she is seducing my servants jesus says 
to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So she's involved, like I said last week, wherever there's idolatry, there's sexuality. Immorality. The two go together. So even in your own life, if there's sexual immorality, you can bet there's idolatry there. Hmm. So here's somebody in the church who's being allowed to teach, who's seducing the people. And sometimes words that come out from people that are seduced and broken, you will find that they can seduce the church even further. Hectic. I'm just looking by what I see in this. I'm sure you see it too. I'm not saying anything beyond this, right? And so he, 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 that's his view of that church. And then Sardis, verse number, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, and to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, don't make too much of that. It's just, it's good number, goodly number. I know your works and that you have a name, that you're alive, but you're dead. <laughs> People look at you and think, whoa, they're dancing two steps and they have a luck at all spiritually. They're dead. Now, other people must not be able to say, this is alive. You know, this is alive, that's dead. He should say that. He's watching. For us, we can put on a show like a club. Eh? We're alive. Party! <laughs> we can do all that, right? But basically what he's saying is that you're spiritually dead. I, 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 that's hard to receive, but, but certainly he's talking to this church. And then verse 4, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So we won't deal with every aspects, aspect of the concerns of Jesus, but I will address a few. Do you know what guerrilla warfare is? Guerrilla warfare is um, this, they are insurgents, they, they are rebel groups. They're not the official army, but where there's an official army, like in Mozambique, up north, um, there's a Mozambican army, but there are rebel groups and they are involved in terrorizing the people up north towards the Tanzania border. And they have moved a lot of people out of, the, uh, out of their homes and so on. And they are, uh, like I say, insurgents. They're not the official army, but they fight the powers that be. And they want something else. They want something that the, the country has. Um, and so they are, are called uh, the guerrilla warfare. What, the, what they do is sometimes they bust up the road and the Mozambique, Mozambican's roads has been bust up badly. They fix it and they've been bust up again by some of these people. And the reason for that is when the roads are messed up, the cars and everything else slows down in that tract of land, kilometers of it. And when you slow down, then they take pot shots at you. Um, guerrilla warfare. They don't care whether you're civilians or not. Spiritually speaking, you know, there's, I'm going somewhere with this. Spiritually speaking, even though the war, spiritual war, has been won through Jesus, Satan has been conquered and defeated. He, Satan, our arch enemy, still uses guerrilla tactics to gain beachheads and, 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 and try to overcome the church. What Jesus on one hand said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But the enemy wages a, a rebel war. That's what he does. And the war, listen to this, is not coming so much from outside the church. The war is coming from within it. Very subtle. And I'll show you what he did, what he does. You've heard of the Trojan horse, have you? Well, I found out it's a myth, but still, it's a nice story. 
but definitely there is a city called Troy and there's definitely Greeks that um, fought against Troy. So the story of the Trojan horse is well known and the first mentioned in Odyssey and it describes how Greek soldiers were able to take the city of Troy after a fruitless 10 year siege by hiding in a giant horse, wooden horse, supposedly left as an offering to the goddess Athena. So they, they were their big horse and um, large thing and they went inside and hid. And so the, uh, so the uh, Greek soldiers hiding in there were taken in, into the city by the Trojans. And so, um, so similarly, there's a war being waged against the church and we are looking at people on the outside that look like triple six, eh? And they look like this and that and the other and we think, well, wow, that's the devil. Look at that, they're doing this devil. But what the enemy has done is war he has waged a guerrilla warfare and he has infiltrated the church. Hmm. They're not outside, they're inside. So what is the war against the church that is coming from inside it? Look at this text in First Timothy chapter 4. Paul is writing to Timothy and he says these words now. Verse 1. The spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, and let's read the whole thing and then we'll talk. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received, with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, if you look at these verses, we will see the war. One of the first things that you see is that some people will depart from the faith. And it's not like somebody taking pot shots at us from outside, they are rebel gangs, soldiers inside the country, inside the country, and that they are paralyzing the citizens by coming in unawares. Now, if the church is hoodwinked and deceived, it can be, you know, the spirit of deceit is so deceiving that you won't know you're being deceived. That's the nature of a spirit of deceit. Agree? What do you all think? These people seem to be looking at me quite strangely. But I'll get to them now. They're normally very happy people. The attack is that some people will depart from the faith. That is a war. That is a war. You have people sitting in church but they are far away from the faith. Have gone. They have not departed the church, the building. They can attend the building. But their hearts are so far from the Lord. Who did that to them? The enemy. That's what he's done. And the Lord can see it. I know this, I know that, I know that, I know that. You are like this. You're listening to that woman, that Jezebel, you, you is part of the synagogue of Satan. Hey, this is a church. He says, some will depart from the faith. That's a war within the church. And then he says, some will he give heed to seducing spirits. How would he be, how would he be seduced? if not by words, preaching even. That's why I don't spend too much time on Christian TV. 
I don't spend time on Christmas, Christy TV. I don't watch too much of it. If anything, there may be one guy or somebody I would listen to from time to time, but not on a regular basis. Because the moment I sit down to listen, I'm very objective when I listen. Objectively listening to what is being said and what is not being said. Who is this fella? What are they saying? Why are they saying that? Now you can get seduced, I say to you. But the spirit of the Lord that is in us is able to give you discernment so you be awake. But as I said, the church is fast asleep. Hmm? They look like they're alive, but they're dead. I'm talking generally, I'm not talking about us, but I'm, I could include us. Giving heed to deceiving spirits, listening to these spirits, he's not talking about spirits, devils coming in, hey, I don't want to serve Jesus, you serve me. No, not that. He's talking about words and the spirits that are in people that's coming out. And they are preaching. And then he says, and doctrines of devils. Doctrines of demons, really? What is a demonic doctrine? It can be so close, fine line. And yet it can take you to hell, that thing. I talked to, you, to us last week about um, Nicholas, if you recall. Nicholas was in the church, he was part of the seven. He ended up becoming a heretic, leading the church to, to another place. So much so that Jesus talked about the whole, the whole group of people under Nicholas as the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans. Only some one place, two places you read about it in those two churches we dealt with last week. And those churches, and the Nicolaitans, as I pointed out, had been people who, who lived for compromise. They, they compromised. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. You can, you, can, you can go to the pagan festivals. You can cut potatoes, onions, tomatoes there uh, because all your connections are there. And then at the same time, you can go and sit at the table of the Lord. It's okay. Nothing will happen to you. Really? Really? Who said that? This is the doctrines of devils. You tell me if that's something else. What are you talking about? I, I need to think through this. What, what is the doctrine? Do I have doctrines of devils? I have to ask. Am I, am I um, dividing the word of the Lord accurately? Or as accurately as possible? Or am I just picking up things from the internet, cut and paste, and um, feed? I got to think about these things. Am I going to the Bible? Am I dividing rightly the word of truth that is there? That I understand the doctrines of God, the doctrines of Christ. The devils are preaching. They're not preaching outside, they're preaching inside. They're trying to seduce us. They're saying it's okay for you to do that activity or that activity. In fact, those people are better than the Christian brothers you got. I don't know about that. I don't care what my brothers and sisters are like, but they are my brothers and sisters. It's like any family. We got trouble in our families, right? You don't disown them. But those that do not belong, they're not sons and not daughters, I can't trust them. Hello? No, I do not that I can't trust them as people, but I can, you know, I can't trust what they say. But so that's why we, we put up our defense. When we come to sisters, brothers and sisters, there's really no defense. No, I'm asking you to put up a defense. I'm asking that you would become discerning. Yeah, that, the other thing, obviously, you know, whatever is coming out of there is not going to save you. This thing, it's possible that it can lead you somewhere else. So think through it. I'm asking you and me to be smart. Some will depart from the faith. Some will give heed to seducing spirits. 
and some to doctrines of devils and they will speak lies in hypocrisy it says and because their conscience is seared you know chudu you know what chudu is eh? hot iron is like a hot rod that you put a, a brand in the fire and you take the hair out of the head chipped you know the one chudu they call it in tamil i don't know what you all call it it again see the fire take the hair out of the sheep head and then wash it with soap i eat awful very minimally as you know you can hear i have a uh, an issue yeah but la people's consciences that are seared with a brand of fire a fire brand where kajimet we don't think there's anything wrong with that it's okay i'm living after nicholas he taught me to compromise i can give my body to whatever else all kinds of immorality but my spirit to god your body is the temple of the holy spirit everybody say <laughs> and not these clowns or what else they do It's forbidding to marry tell them not to get married you know the devil is so subtle you get one group whole priest don't get married and the other one committed the worst sexual atrocities in the whole world why don't you just get buckled man please do us a favor and i'm not labeling anybody at the moment you should know who i'm talking about right don't get who said you shouldn't get married because jesus said so they get married to the church no man get married you feel hot get married <laughs> get married i got married when i was 23 by the way i couldn't handle the heat <laughs> 23 23 couldn't wait enjoyed the wife of my youth forbidding to marry it's the devil that god created sex god created marriage he did it not illegal illicit sex immorality that is idolatry that come from the enemy where you get your mind forbidding to marry come on give us a break not everybody can do that they find that these cults they put the pressure on their own people i get married and they they look like holy you know that's holy i got a fan one of the days we're going to cast something out seriously and then what they do also people they commanding to abstain from foods which god created we receive he's talking about becoming a, a vegan huh? mm. they are pushing a vegan agenda you know what vegan is eh? by the way vegetable only no meat i'm not saying that's devilish but there are people that push their agenda to gain godliness and spirituality hey hey, hey. if we chow beef or lamb or whatever it's not going to make you less spiritual i love beef better than lamb i love beef give me beef any day i'll chow however you want to cook it i'll eat it fry it cook it whatever stir fry I make you hungry i know but what can kind i of do pushing a vegan agenda that's what's happening here the lord is saying who are these people for every creature of god is good in other words cow lamb chicken all good then you'll have somebody that comes up with spiritually no i don't eat any meat for spiritual reasons really 
And then there was a, for a long time, the church had an anti-pork stand. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? The, but bacon, I'll eat, I, I, I eat bacon. What's the point? What, what's the real point? Yeah, I can tell you that the Lord said don't eat some of the stuff because Old Testament stuff. He didn't have a fridge, no fridge. You know, keep pork outside and you, you're going to die if you eat this stuff. But anyway, it's a good idea to you know, abstain from some of the heavy fattening, fattening type meals. But don't say because of God and spirituality and I'm getting more spiritual. It doesn't mean if you eat only vegetable, you're more spiritual. And you have what you call Daniel fast. I'm on Daniel. Yeah, really. God bless you. Man. You want to fast, do it right. Huh? But don't get excited about eating so much vegetables that I'm um, rising, making, raising the price of vegetables because of you. <laughs> Pushing a vegan agenda, God. Yet God says all is good. So looking at the churches that addressed in Revelation, Jesus starts by addressing the angel, the angel at each of these churches, the pastor, the leader. The angels are the messengers, as I said, and they are very accountable. They're accountable, and they told us at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, if you instruct, Paul talking to Timothy, and he says, instruct, if you instruct the brothers in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and, the, and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. Good doctrine has to do with both teaching and behavior. You know, people behave badly because they don't have good doctrine. That too is worth a lot, just that line. People's behavior is affected by how they believe what they believe. And if they've been seduced by a spirit, their minds are all messed up, then their behavior would be something different. But we have to instruct, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing my job, my job, as Paul is instructing the brother, you must instruct the brothers, sisters, in all of these things. You will be a good minister if you do that and nourished in the words of faith and in good doctrine which you have carefully followed. So what is a sound doctrine? It is the doctrine of Christ, his words and his ways. The time will come when scripture says, when they will not endure sound doctrine. See, even now people look at this and think, oh, I'm getting ID today. No, you can't endure it. You've got to endure sound doctrine. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? Why can't you endure it? If the cap fits, otherwise, you all know that one. Second Timothy 4.3 says this, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but, the, but according to their own desires, and because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And verse 4 says, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. This is the last time. This is the last days. For the time will come when people will not endure sound doctrine. What they want to hear is how, how they can be healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. That's what they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hear the other stuff. There's hard devils, doctrine, this, that, things are really, I'm getting very, very, um, you know, it's not really helping me. They have itching ears, they get excited, they jump, they throw money on the floor, and I don't get any money, but anyway, <laughs> think of it. People get excited, right? They want that church. They want that church. They will turn their ears away from the truth. That's what's happening. And then it says in Peter, false teachers will secretly enter like a Trojan horse. Look at it, second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 but there were also false prophets among the people hmm? guerrilla warfare even as there will be false teachers among you 
who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. Yeah. Swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit. In other words, people are saying, covetousness, they're interested in a lot of your money. So they'll exploit you. And they'll tell you all kinds of wonderful hectic things and you will send money to them you are and will be exploited if a fellow down the street they're begging from you you got a big long story you can bet that fellow got something you know he's tell the story to every single person he's got i just need five rand you know to go to Maritzburg. Or well, they might even say, I, I need uh, 300 rand to go take a bus and go. Things are bad. I've got to go there now. That's that. But you have people that are exploit the church by covetousness. They will exploit you with deceptive words. And for a long time, God says, for a long time, the judgment has not been idle. In other words, judgment is coming. It's not parking in idle. It's coming. It's in, ga in gear, in motion. And that destruction will, does not slumber. That destruction won't sleep. It won't rest. It's going to come. And you find those people that are, have, are heretics and teaching nonsense. Yeah. And then in James 3, it says, My brothers, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Notice. I can tell you one thing, but I'm the guy that is under stricter scrutiny me judgment is greater on me i rather not talk than talk so if i do talk i gotta talk what i think god wants me to say because i'm under stricter judgment so anyway in summary some encouragement from jesus coming out of the revelation he says do not fear any of this don't worry about it. don't fear any of this Look at it, verse 10, Revelations 2. Do not fear any of these things which are about, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. He's not talking about, you know, the last days. This is to that church. He said, you're going to be thrown into prison. This is what's going to happen. Don't be afraid. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. And was it like a, there's like a, pun on the word the crown of life because people that had it's like the keys to the city people certain people are given uh, the, the keys to that city in Smyrna they used to call it becoming the crown of Smyrna <laughs> and the Lord knows all of it he says I will give you the crown of life you know what what is crown of Smyrna hmm? I'll give you that I got bigger things to give don't fear any of it. Don't get worried about it. You don't have to be afraid because me, I live in you and we, you live in me. We're going to make this happen. But I'm telling you, these things are happening already. They've come in secretly. They're trying to do it. It's a guerrilla warfare. Some are going to go away. Something's going to happen. That's going to happen. People will come to the Lord, get excited, then they leave. All of those things are going to happen. People are going to fall by the wayside. They're going to be excited one day down the next don't be afraid. You keep your eyes on the Lord. And then he says in verse, uh, in Revelations 2, 25, hold fast. But hold fast what you have till I come. It reminds me of that boat ride in Mozambique, coming back home. Man, we had to hold fast. The young crew told us, stand in front. Go stand, don't sit the back there. The back is going, you can be thrown out. Go to the front. Of the boat, a little boat, and the wind, and the rain, and the water. It's like a movie. You know, we have to hold fast. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at my friend too, and he's a red face that is, yeah, now water. Hold fast. I think of that. And the Lord says, hold fast. Hold on to what you have. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on tightly. 
Hold on tightly. You have, a, you have great things, wonderful things. Hold on tightly. Don't give up. Don't let go. And the third thing he says in Revelation 3, 2, be watchful. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Our job, be alert, be watchful. Be watchful. Keep your eyes open. Check your own life. Check your own family. See how things are going in your community. See how things are going in your church. Be prayerful. Don't point fingers at your brothers and sisters. It's not necessary. What's that? It's a devilish thing to do. How are you going to change it by pointing your finger? How? How, how, how is that going to change? Unless you get on your knees hmm? and you bring us before the Lord. Be watchful. And the only reason God gives you any revelation about anybody is when you, when you can pray. You can really pray, cry out to God. Tears, I mean, before God. And, and then, of course, it says you must strengthen the things which remain. It's easy to break things, really. Hard to build things. Sometimes brothers and sisters can be pulled. It takes a long time to build them up in the most holy faith. Long time. It takes a few seconds to break it. A few seconds. Just say something, boom, they're gone. That which has been built into them for years can be broken within seconds. You and I know that. But you better be careful because you're dealing with the Lord of the church. If anybody is offended because of you, and walk away from the Lord because of you and me. You have to account to the Lord for that. It's hard, right? So pray. Don't, don't judge. Pray. He's the only judge. He's the only one who can say he's going to make it. He can't make it. Who are we to say he's going to make it? She won't make it. Who's, who's going to say that? We can't. You've got to watch yourself. Lest you be... Be watchful, strengthen the things which remained that are ready to die for I have not found your works perfect before God. Take care of those things that are weak. Take care of things that are breaking, that are weakening. Go and help and visit and encourage and pray for those people that are needing help. Speak encouragement. You know, speak life. You must stick close to people that are speaking life. Run away from those that speak death. Stay far away. Hmm? But cling to those that are speaking life to you. They are dear friends. You won't get friends like that. Speaking life. Helping you. Staying with you. Now I know you will listen to this last part and be excited about it. I know. But, but there's a whole lot we said, right? I see, I read Facebook, I tell you this is, don't follow this people, don't follow that people. They're so angry with people. Then lastly, it says, remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you do not watch, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. Why, why he says thief? It's not like I'm going to steal something from you, no. Thief, don't tell you I'm coming 10 o'clock, no, 5 past 10 today tonight. I'm coming to the front door and through the small glass that I'm going to break and I come in. What is your alarm? I know it. I've got a computer to, to disarm it. I can do it. Watch out for me. You can say that. No. But the Lord is saying, I will come upon you as a thief. What does it mean? I'm not going to give you the time. You've got to be careful because you don't know when your time is that he will visit you and really come and rebuke and deal with us. Hold fast and repent, therefore you will. If you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Be alert and look out for those things which are dying. Strengthen them. That's what he says. All right, let's stand. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. I'm going to pray for you, and then we're going to go home. If you need prayer, well, you can come out. I'll be here waiting for you. We can talk, you can pray. But let, let me pray for us. There's so much going on. You might forget this during the week. But, you know, I think first of God's dealing with us 
as individuals, each one of us, each one of us. Don't point a finger at anybody else, just think about yourself. I look at myself and think, well, brother, you have a stricter judgment because you open your mouth, because you want to teach. There's a stricter judgment on you. God is watching us, those that are teaching, those that are sharing, watching. And if we are also seduced by a spirit, he knows, and he will visit. In fact, the gear is in motion, it's not sitting in idle. Because what seducing spirits do is not only take themselves to hell, but they try to draw many, many people. So I'm very broken when I look at the church, generally speaking, I really am very disheartened by the lot of the things that go on. And of course, I'm encouraged by what God says. He says, this is going to happen in the last day. People are going to walk away from the faith. And I think, whoa, there's a war inside the church then. And it looks like everything is cool, but no, there's a war. Everyone has a very different way of thinking about Christian life and how to live, blah, blah, blah. So let's pray for ourselves this week. Bring ourselves and repent, hold fast and repent. Hold on to what you got. Let's pray. Bring yourself, would you hold out your hand to the Lord as if